technically speaking, te te technically, technically, technically speaking. I ain't talking vegan when I said that I've been eating, making money on the side, but I use it for the main. I'm speaking in code when I tech talk that financial freedom. Have a seat, cause you gon' wanna sit up at my table. Get plugged in that it, girl. I see with the cables, yeah. Network engineering is for you, it ain't no labels, yeah. Shaky with my passion, took a leap, it got me stable, yeah. Now I make a hundred K or better, paper couldn't fit a stapler. And I spend it on my passion, cause I'm capable. Technically speaking, now I'm really talking vegan when I said that I've been eating, I've been technically speaking. that 2.6 compare cisco wireless architectures and ap modes okay so wireless architectures we have autonomous um ap architecture cloud-based ap architecture and lightweight ap architectures okay let's come down here and talk about our self-contained devices all right our self-contained architecture let me try to blow that up a little bit here okay hopefully you guys can see that just fine all right so autonomous ap architecture now we know ap is just an access point that's all it stands for so with our access point um, being self-contained, that's all autonomous means, is self-contained, um, it can have both wireless and wired capabilities. So as you can see here, you know, it's, uh, it can get transmit data through radio frequencies or actual ethernet cables, right, or fiber optics, depending on what you're using, okay? Now, since it is self-contained, that means it has some type of hardware that you can, you know, bridge and, you know, you can talk to via um, your SSIDs. And we know what SSIDs mean. It's just the name of the network. So you'll have some type of bridge with this um, autonomous AP to where users can connect to it. Now, it can be managed by a controller or it can be managed individually, right? Like some um, one uh, and an individual, somebody on the team can manage it, or you can have a controller, you can set up automation and um, it can be managed, right? And each AP must be configured with this uh, management IP address, so it can be remotely remotely um, accessed, you know, using like Telnet, SSH, or a GUI, which we'll get into uh, later on. Well, probably tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so this management IP address, as you see right here, uh, this uh, AP is going to have one. And again, it's just for us to be able to get in remotely. And as you, as we move forward, you'll see that uh, not only these wireless devices, but also routers will have a management IP address so we can access it remotely, right? Through SSH. We can do Telnet, but Telnet, like I said, is not, um, it's not secure. So SSH is the best, or you can do a web GUI interface, which is much easier uh, because you just click save and click go and click all these other things instead of going through a command line okay so just know that autonomous ap is exactly what it name means it is just a self-contained device that um you can use for both wireless and wired capabilities so it can do both um at the same time so that's that's really all it is and you can have multiple of these ap's in your network and as you can see in this diagram there are four of these and how they're connected um, and like I said, they're access points. So of course they're gonna be at the bottom of the flow because these are where our hosts, our end devices will connect to, okay? And then it'll go up to an access layer of in our network to where our switches can now start forwarding and switching the traffic. And then of course we have our distribution layer and our core layer, right? Three tier architecture. So kind of see how that goes. Moving along. We have our cloud-based architecture. Now, this is um, an alternative. Let me try to pull this up here. Okay. So if you don't want autonomous, you definitely can use an alternative, which is cloud-based um, AP architecture, where the um, access point management functions is kind of like 
um, is pushed to the company, to the enterprise via the internet, via the cloud. So anytime somebody say, oh, cloud this, cloud that, which we already talked about um, in our previous lesson, which, you know, infrastructure as a service or software as a service, platform as a service, right? Um, those things are just saying that, hey, they are all managed in the on the internet, they're managed on someone else's server, someone else's computer, and we are using those resources, regardless of what those resources may be, whether it be just their infrastructure or maybe their whole platform, right? So anytime you see cloud-based AP architect architecture, that means that the manages the, uh, the network is managed over the internet, okay? So we have this cloud managed access point that um, you know we're going to manage via some type of you know whatever they're whatever we're getting that from. And for as an example, we have um, Meraki, right? Cisco Meraki. Um, as we go on a little more, I think. Let me see. It just goes into a little bit here. Um, now you may. I think. Let me I think. It's chapter twenty seven. You're going to have to go into to get a little more information about um, Meraki, Cisco Meraki, because you can actually um, be a Wi Fi engineer, right? You can actually go down the deep dive of um, cloud based architecture, or even wireless architectures, and, um, you know, take that path, right? You can, even with this, uh, with this CCNA exam, you can literally just only do um, become a Cisco Meraki engineer, right? Um, so, but I believe that's more information you get deep dive into the book. I'm just gonna go over, like I said, high level. So you guys can understand these terms. And then when you go into the flashcards, you can try and, you can, uh, you know, again, remember these terms because this is all about just comparing Cisco wireless architecture and mode. So you're just comparing. So on the, on the exam, they're just gonna say, what's the difference between, you know, autonomous and cloud-based or give me an example of cloud-based or something in that sort. But, um, I definitely want you guys to, if you're interested in cloud and wireless, definitely go into the book and, you know, go deep dive into Cisco Meraki because it's definitely a high paying skill out here. Okay. So, um, yeah, so cloud-based AP architecture, right? It's just cloud networking service. You know, you configure on your APs, as you see down here, you're just configuring, um, you know, was our, was the device that you're using is the Meraki device and you're configuring what you want you're configuring the whatever details whatever settings you have and again it's going to be managed via the internet another provider is going to to manage that um and as you can see here you have the cloud that's management and management literally manages your ap's okay that's all that means so instead of autonomous where they going to self manage, you know, they're going to self-contain, they're going to do what they need to do by themselves. And, you know, you have your IP that you can, you know, jump in each one and see, are you doing what you need to do, what I set you up to do, right? Then you have your cloud base where you're in the cloud um, via the internet, via some type of GUI, and you are literally managing all of these via the internet, you know? So it, instead of, you know, actually hopping into the devices or the devices doing their own thing, um, we have, you know, a, a cloud-based solution for that. And um, there are two like distinct paths of data when they're doing this uh, cloud base. And if I'm not mistaken, it's like a control plane and a data plane, right? So the control plane will like, um, it's used to like control and manage and monitor like the AP itself. And then you have the data plane, which end users, you know, send traffic through, through the AP. So you'll have like a data plane down here, which could very well this represent, or maybe it just represents the radio frequencies, but we can say it represents the data plane down here. And then up here, you see these dot, this dotted line and it's going up to the cloud. You could say this is the control plane because this is the plane where, you know, traffic management traffic is going. And this is the plane where end user traffic is going. Right. Um, that's usually how that's set up in a cloud uh, based architecture. OK. Um, moving along to lightweight AP architectures. So we have a WLC, which is a wireless LAN controller, WLC. You definitely want to make sure that you understand 
this is you're going to see it a lot on the exam wlc again it's just a wireless LAN controller right and it's used to control the lightweight ap's the lightweight access points um and this la this light like lightweight access point actually has a protocol um for itself to be able to communicate and since it's lightweight you see the name lightweight is only for small companies okay so this uh controller uses the uses a specific uh, mechanism to talk to lightweight access points wireless access points so they can obviously switch traffic right now i believe the standard is still 802.11 um i don't know if it could be like ad something or it could just still just be 802.11 with wireless ap's um i think the, with why they call them lightweight is because they only perform that one task, which is like transmitting um, transmitting data through those frequencies, the 802.11. That's the only thing they do. They don't do anything else, right? They're lightweight. They're just means of you know getting the wireless data uh, transmitted from the client to the switch to the network. Right, and you can see that wireless controller is actually connected um, to the switch, so the switch can start doing intelligence. So yeah, the lightweight really doesn't perform anything but the basic standard, the basic 802.11 standard, which is their protocol of how they transmit data, and they use the protocol lightweight access point protocol (LWAPP) to communicate with the LAPs, with the lightweight um, access point, okay? So again, the lightweight is lightweight um, access points, a lightweight wireless access point, because it only do, it only does like a certain, um, a certain amount of data traffic, um, 802.11, that's all it does. As far as cloud-based, it can do more than that, right? We can actually, um, configure and transmit stuff through the cloud, right? We can manage and do all the, those things. And as far as autonomous, autonomous has its own mind. It does its own thing, right? It's self-contained, you know, but as far as lightweight, it doesn't have that much, um, that have that much intelligence, right? So it literally does small amounts of data transfer and again, it's for small companies because it's lightweight. And you may see a company with a bunch of lightweight APs. It may just be like specific to that type of land, or they may have um, they may have just you know for some reason why they're using a bunch of these lightweight APs. Because I've definitely seen them in uh, my first contract at the hospital. I've seen the lightweight APs. Um, I didn't work on them because I wasn't in the wireless department. I was more voice. So I didn't, you know, get deep dive into it, but I definitely saw throughout network discovery that we had a, quite a few in the network. So that was pretty interesting. Um, and then let's go in here. I think lag, I think we talked about lag link aggregation. Um, I think that's more with the 802.3, something with ether channel, um, something with ethernet. Let's actually take a look here lag link aggregation what is link aggregation combine click the physical ports oh yeah it's just combining those ports we did talk about that in ether channel that's why it looked familiar so like didn't we just talk about that already yes yeah, describe different various methods for using multiple parallel networks connections and okay whatever what else we got let's go to cisco community these are the best people you want to google and get the article from is what is this? Oh, this is my Microsoft Edge. I don't really use this. But yeah, it says introduction, lag, link aggregation. Okay, of the, oh, WLC must match the width of the data pipe. We don't need that. I don't know what all that is. You cannot configure the controllers. Channel group. Oh, so yeah, it's about bundling ports. That's all link, that's all lag is. Okay, so it's just literally just bundling the ports. Um, so when you see, hold on, where I'm at. So when you see lag, you know that that's all about bundling ports. Okay, that's why that's here. So now we talked about 
autonomous, self-contained, do its own thing, have its own mind, very intelligent. We have cloud-based, which we manage, configure, and do all those things from the cloud. Um, and then lightweight. Lightweight really only did, um, operates on the 802.11 uh, standard. That's all it will do. And um, it will communicate with the WLC, which is a wireless LAN controller, right? Because you need even more intelligence to add to that. So we have a controller that will um, we can control the lightweight AP with. Okay. So then we have split MAC architecture, right? It's splitting functions between an AP and a WLC. Okay. Now autonomous APs, they we know that they work alone. They have its own things. You you configure them one by one and you let them go on about their business. Right. Um, now with with that, well, with you allowing it to do it at once, it's kind of almost in a decentralized type of architecture, right? Because you could figure what you want, you allow it to learn the behavior, you allow, you allow it to do its own thing. Now, with doing that, it has some type of, you know, drawbacks in your network. And um, that's where split Mac architecture come in, because there's no like central point where you can like get things done. Um, and we'll talk about QoS and stuff, but that's really a big factor with autonomous um, APs is the QoS. We want to be able to manage that QoS in some in some sense. So what basically came about is um, splitting functions between a, an AP, uh, an access point, and a wireless LAN controller, and that is where split MAC architecture comes about, right? We're splitting the functions. We're moving some functions to like a central location, like the AP, and then we move some functions to, um, to the LAN, right? The wireless LAN controller, okay? So we have some functions that we have like real-time and management functions. Um, that's where the AP will handle. As you can see the, the uh, access point right here, you can see it will handle more of the real time and, and management functions. Um, that's where the AP is right here. And then you have the WLC. As you, let me blow this up. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I can't really see this like this. Okay, there we go. So, um, AP, we have the real-time data and the management data will come in. Now we wanna be able to split some of that up. So we have our WLC. Now, as you can see as well, we have our CAP, WAP, right? Our CAP, WAP, which is, again, it's really just a term for encapsulating data. And specifically, it's gonna encapsulate data between an AP and a wireless LAN controller. OK, that's again, it's split max. So we're splitting up the functions of the architecture. We have real time traffic, meaning that, you know, users are coming in. Users are um, accessing the, the network through like you like you can see here, the SSID. They're putting in their password. They're sending emails, sending chats, whatever end users do. OK, and the AP is going to get that automatically. Now the AP, that's all it cares about. But then we have the wireless controller. The wireless controller shouldn't care about the access, who's trying to access it and, and switching that, um, that forefront data. The wireless LAN controller should do what? Should control. So we wanna give that, we wanna um, have that operate on only like the management side, only the configuring side, only um, management, right, security. QoS, again, we'll get into QoS, we haven't got there, but this is really what it was really made for is to um, help with QoS, help with quality of service. So we can ensure that our data is getting where it needs to get because audio will trumps, you know, getting, you know, getting on a website, you know, surfing the web. And if I was going to talk over the phone and surf the web, my, you know, internet on the web, my web page may not load, but I'll still be able to talk freely. It may be a little, you know, buffer, a little jitter here and there, but I'll still be if my call won't end, you know, so that's QoS. QoS is prioritizing this data. Who should get the data first? What type of data should get to where it needs to get first? You know, because all this data is coming. So with split Mac, we have um, separation of the two, okay? So the AP is gonna do one thing, which is real time, and the wireless controller is gonna do the other thing, which is what 
um, admins do, right? Which is what is management do? What is the authentication or security? Again, QoS is the biggest thing. And they're gonna speak between each other, right? And as you can see here, they're speaking between each other and they're using a certain protocol. And that protocol, let me see. What does this stand for? It's like control and provisioning of something wireless, control and something. I don't know. The control, the control and provisioning of wireless access points. So yeah, I knew that. A oh, standard uh, network protocol. Okay, okay, cool. So yes, and it manages the collection of wireless data points on this wireless. Let me go in a little more. Let's see what else. Soft Cisco controller. Cap WAP, Cap WAP, I don't know. However, you want to say that. Uh, let's see. What did it say? It says you can manage the APs with the WLC, but it has many features. Communicate at all times. Okay, they're just saying what they need to say. A controller based solution and D essentially manages the configuration for all access points that has joined the WLC. It will also mention the firmware. Okay, so it's just basically, oh, let me go up here. If you need to deploy a wireless network, you have two options. Use it autonomous AP or lightweight AP. What's the difference? Okay, they're just telling you what's happening. If you use a lightweight AP, you need a central device to manage the AP in your network. The device is called a wireless LAN controller. The AP use a protocol called CAPWAP before LA. Okay, you won't have to look in the book. Okay, so basically, yes, it's, let me go back here. It's basically just uh, a tunnel for the AP and the WLC to communicate with each other. That's all, right? Because the WLC needs to be like, hey, AP, I need you to do this and what's happening with here. And then the AP will prop will connect to the um, WLC and say, hey, well, you know, this user is trying to access with this password and this SSID, um, is this right? And then the WLC will probably say, well, no, it's not right. So deny this user or it is right. So let this user through. You know, so that's kind of how they'll talk between each other. They'll do like a check and balance type ordeal. Okay. So those are the architectures. Pretty simple, right? We have autonomous, does its own thing. Okay. Cloud base is managed and configured. Group number one is TSU Team Hub. This is where all our hub information is at. This is where you'll go first. And you can ask questions here, create you a nice card with your name on it, and let us know what you're here, what your goals is, so we can help you accomplish that. Okay? The second board you would come up to is how to get a six-figure job. This is my exact path on how I was able to break into tech and get a six-figure tech job. Even when you got that job, or let's just say you are at a comfortable job, it may not be six figures, maybe, you know, 90K, 80K, something in that sort. And now you're looking into making six figures in your business. You can use this board as well so we can help you get to that goal with getting six figures in your business, okay, by utilizing technology. And the third one here that everyone mostly is at is the CCNA or Net Plus exam notes. All right. These are all the um, exam notes here. And we have it in our boards that you see where it has star and you see our network fundamentals, network. Via the cloud, via the Internet, not, you know, on its actual device to let us do what it wants to do. Uh, lightweight AP. It will only operate 802.11 standard is very simple and it communicates with a WLC, a wireless LAN controller. So then when you have your um, AP and your wireless LAN controller, you can have a split Mac architecture. So you can split up the um, operations. You can have the AP deal with real time traffic and then the WLC does like some type of checks and balances to check whatever. Uh, the AP has going on and they can communicate through a protocol called control and provisioning of wireless access points. It's a tunneling protocol. And again, all you really need to know is it caps all data between AP and WLC, right? That's really the definition you just need to worry about with that protocol, okay? Now modes. Modes, we have for AP, for a wireless access point, and 
It's in, uh, I believe it's just, I believe it's just lightweight. Let me see. Yes, yes. So, because autonomous, you do it at once, and then cloud-based, you have something else. So, yeah, so with lightweight, you have a lightweight AP, you can put it in these modes here. Um, we have local mode, which is a default mode. You might want to write that down. Local mode is a default mode, um, and it offers the, the network ID when it's not transmitting, some things in that. You might want to look into the book and actually read up on these modes. But just briefly, local mode is the default mode. You should really know that. And then monitor mode, um, the AP is just acting as like a, a, a monitor, right? It's just monitoring the network, this is a dedicated monitor. Um, you can have the AP go into flex connect mode, um, which means that you can kind of, I believe it can do both with the WLC. And instead of having like split architecture, it, it does both, right? So in case the WLC go down, it will act as a WC as well, as a WLC, yeah, as a wireless LAN controller. So that's flex connect mode. Um, you have sniffer, you can put your wireless uh, access point in a sniffer mode, which means that it will um, it will sniff out packets. So you can kind of use it as like you in the field, you may hear something like Wireshark and Wireshark is like a packet capture type software to where you can capture packets and, and decode them and see what's going on in the network to see if you know, if some data was corrupted or if data is being sent and where is it failing, if it is failing somewhere. Um, so it's just, again, it's just basically, um, you know, you're just analyzing packets. So that's what a sniffer mode is and analyze packets. You have the rogue detector mode. You can set that in. Rogue detector is like, rogue means like, like malicious. So you can set this AP to be in some type of like, detects malicious APs or malicious devices that's trying to connect to the wireless network, right? So this um, this lightweight AP, you can say, hey, it's on the network just to just to um, detect malicious um, malicious uh, host in devices or any devices on the network, right? So that's one mode you can put it in. You can put it in a bridge mode. Um, bridge, of course, what it is is bridge is meant is to link to uh, Two locations together. So uh, maybe if you have like three uh, access points, maybe the middle one is acts as a bridge and not more where you can connect to, but something where it bridges the other two access points together in some sense. Um, and then you got the flex plus bridge mode, right? So, you know, you got the flex connect and you can bridge it together. So it could be like a, a, a default for like redundancy with the flex and then the bridge where it's bridging the data. So you can put it in both those modes together. And then SE connect mode. And that's something that you have to use some type of special software. I think SE means like expert software, somewhere, something like that. And um, you need a software for that. We don't use that. I haven't heard that outside of this exam. So forget that. Um, but these are the modes. And I believe we are in chapter like 27, 25 with the uh, wireless. And honestly, you can just literally just like copy local mode and put it in the search when you get into the book and look where local mode is at. So you can kind of go a little more deep into these modes, okay? Um, and just so you can know as well the difference because they will ask you the different modes. Like, so what, if I was to set, if you were a network administrator and you set a wireless, a lightweight AP as sniffer mode, what would the AP be doing? Like, what is the primary functions of the AP? And then they'll give you a list of things of, and one will be what sniffer, what, you know, sniffers do. So it's good to really know like, okay, local, obviously that's the default mode of a wireless, um, access point. But then we have monitor. What does monitor mean? It means I'm monitoring something. Flex connect. That means I'm flexible in how I connect. How do you connect? And of course, you might have to go a little more deeper into that, but you just flex connect with um, the split architect mode. Sniffer. Again, I'm sniffing packets. I'm analyzing packets. Um, rogue detector. I am looking at, you know, detecting malicious 
um, malicious devices, bridge mode. What is a bridge? I'm, you know, from one to the other. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bridge data from one to the other. And then you got flex plus bridge. So as long as you know what flex is, you know what bridge is, you know what both of them are. And then SC Connect, again, I think that's something like software. Let's just look really quick before I start giving out. SC Connect mode AP. What is S what is that? Um SE Connect Mode AP. SE Connect Mode is different. It's used to AC will listen. Um, they don't really want to tell me. Let me go here. I mean, I guess I could just click the top just to get a little. Oh, here we go. Yeah, the SE mode, con mode allows you to connect the LAP using Cisco Spectrum Expert. Oh, that's what it is. Well, Spectrum Expert is the software and gather vital information about the radio frequency spectrum surrounding the lab, right? Um, do mine to keep the lab operating in SE Connect mode, will not be broadcasting any SSID and does service one clients. The mode is strictly used for troubleshooting purposes. So, if you ever get the question a lot on, on SC Connect as far as the mode, at least you know that, hey, I'm only going to put it in this mode to troubleshoot, okay? So, um, so yeah, I suggest you definitely go over your modes. Um, again, I think that's chapter 27, 26, but you can easily just Google. I mean, I Google, but just do the search right here, the little search. Um, so, yeah. That is compare Cisco wireless architecture and AP mode. So we know the different architectures and then we know the mode. Okay. Um, let's move it along. Let me make sure. Yep. This is next. Now, before we even go into 2.7 through 2.9, which is pretty simple, right? It's pretty, pretty, pretty easy. Do you guys have any questions, comments, concerns about anything that we talked about? Anything from yesterday or anything? No? Okay, that's fine. We can we can move it along. Um, let me make sure I have this up here. All right. So this is uh, the last three sections, right? 2.7, which is about, um, let's just go in. 2.7, that's describe physical infrastructure connections of a wireless LAN component. Right, so we have AP, um, wireless, WLC, wireless LAN controller, access trunk ports, and lag, which we low-key kind of talked about already, right? Um, so AP, what is it, AP? You can see down here, nobody, okay. You can see down here in AP, it's an access point. We can have autonomous, we can have something in the cloud, we can have a light. okay? It's where our wireless device is gonna broadcast um, frequencies that we can actually hop on, right? And we can actually start to, um, you know, get into the network, like pretty simple. And then our wireless LAN controller here at the top is where we control our wireless land, okay? We control our APs. We control what's happening with our, um, our wireless APs and configure them and tell them what's going on and do like, you know, checks and balances, all that good stuff. And as you can see, we have our tunneling pro our protocol where it encrypts the data from our APs, uh, from our lightweight APs to our uh, controller, okay? And then we already talked about access to trunk ports. Um, we have, you see, one is trunk, one is access. Uh, truck link carries multiple VLANs. An access link is only for one VLAN. So we kind of already know that, right? That's kind of what we've already been talking about as far as VLANs are concerned. Let me come down. And just really quick, this is what you would use, this is the knowledge you would have, um, you know, you're, when you're tasked to build a, a wireless LAN, right? You get your APs, right? Do you want an autonomous? You want a lightweight? What do you want? And if of course if it's lightweight, you're gonna couple it with a um, a WLC, a wireless LAN controller, and you're just gonna make sure that everything is connect connected, okay? And that's where the access and the trunk ports come in at. All right. So 
that was pretty simple. Describe the physical infrastructure. That's the physical infrastructure right there. Now, going in talking about lag brings us in 2.7. Describe physical infrastructure um, outside AP, but it goes into lag, right? And then we can go into physical ports and logical interfaces, which we've been talking about. So lag, lag is the link aggregation. Um, I believe the G is just the group when they added link aggregation. Basically, again, multiple interfaces connected in a single, single link. We've already discussed, we already searched what lag is right here, lag. We can just see yeah, a link aggregation. We don't have to, we can say group. Lag combines multiple physical links into a single logical interface, which is referred to as a bundle interface, right? So that's really all it is. It's bundled interfaces. When you see lag, just think of bundled interfaces. Um, let me come here one moment. Oh, that was, that was me clicking that. Okay. I need a new mouse for real. Okay. So, um, we talked about link aggregation. It's just multiple ethernet connections in a single link. Okay. Um, now it acts as though like ether channels, you can kind of say like, oh, okay. Um, you know, lag is the same thing as uh, ether channel, but you know, the WLCs doesn't support um, like negotiation protocols, you can call ether channels, like a negotiation protocol. So uh, like um, LACP or the Cisco proprietary port aggregation, it doesn't support that. So um, they're always going to use lag instead of you know, we will look at it as which will act as the same as ether channel. Okay. Um, lag just means that we are bundling multiple uh, interfaces, multiple links into one link, but that doesn't mean that we are configuring ether channel. So I just hope that you guys can, um, can decipher that, right? It's lag, but it is not ether channel, even though they operate the same. It's just Cisco uh, land controllers, they don't support link aggregation as far as negotiation is concerned. So they don't negotiate anything. We're just bundling or we're not going to bundle. Okay. So it's either nothing or it's on. <laughs> okay. Um, so just like the, you know, the VLANs, you know, the wireless LAN can be, you know, segregated and it can be segregated. I believe the max is 500 uh, wireless LANs could be configured on this um, on this console on this wireless LAN controller, but only so many could be active. Let me see. Um, let's 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 Google that. How many? Because they act as just like VLANs can can configured. I'm gonna say can configured on WLC, hopefully I said that right. Um, can now control up to, yep, 512 wireless LANs. So one wireless, one uh, wireless LAN controller can control up to 512 wireless LANs. So that's just the equivalent, equivalent of saying that a switch can control 512 VLANs. Right for lightweight access points, though for a for lightweight APs. So yeah, let's see. But I think that you can only have so many active, though. That was something that I read. I think you guys should read that in the book because even though you can um, configure five hundred and twelve, only so many could be active. And if I'm not mistaken, it's like 15 or 16. Oh, here we go. That's the number I'm looking for, 15 or 16. Because I had this on, an, on my exam and um, I knew I got it wrong because I'm just like, I don't know, I didn't read this. I didn't read this part of the book. Well, I did, but I wasn't, I don't know, I didn't go hard on wireless that I thought I should, but I honestly didn't care too much. And um, I saw this and I didn't, I didn't care to put it in my head and this was the answer and I knew I got it wrong somehow. Let me see, there we go. So each 
wireless LAN has a separate wireless LAN ID, a separate profile name, and a wireless LAN SSID. All access points can advertise up to 16 wireless LANs. Okay, however, you can create up to LANs and then separately advertise them. So yeah, I think you should go into the book and go read a little more on this as far as um, how many you can configure. We kind of went down a little rabbit hole here, but how many you can configure on the wireless LAN? Because that was a question for me. I saw that and I would say, I'd never forget that question again. <laughs> so definitely make sure you, uh, again, it's chapter 27, 26. Um, but yes, now let's see, we have the physical ports, right? Physical ports and logical interfaces. What are physical ports? The actually at the in the back of the um, AP is you know with the Ethernet cable that's physical, something you could touch, something you can plug into. And then what is logical? Logical means that it is not real, it is not physical in a physical sense. It is something that is created by software, almost in a uh, virtual sense. Actually, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's created by software, but it is in a logical sense, in a theory sense, in a sense that you know. Um, we like data to flow, but it's not how data is physically flowing. Okay, so make sure you understand between the logical and physical. Okay, there are two different things. One you can touch, one you cannot touch. And uh, let's see down here. Let me look into this. What do they say? Oh, VLAN. Okay, so it's just basically telling you about the interfaces, how the interfaces can be dynamic. You have a VLAN for management, and um, you have your wireless LAN, which is going to advertise that SSID for that VLAN. Um, and, you, and it also shows, you know, what's happening through the wireless controller, the switch, you're con you are setting up VLANs, the wireless controller, you're saying, hey, this is, you're setting it up, actually, is this this? Um, wireless LAN, you know, whatever this number is, whatever that number is, and they'll all have their own SSIDs, they'll all have their own network um, IDs, and which will be, you know, broadcasted through to the API, I mean, API, to the AP, which is to its end devices, right? That's how we get on our Wi-Fi. So just showing you here a little more, kind of what we already saw in the previous uh, 2.6, two, yeah, 2.6, so that's pretty pretty regular here. All right, now 2.8. Let me just really quick see if they talked about management too much. I don't think as far as management interfaces down here, but I don't think you have to learn too much about it. In the book, like I said, they may talk about the management interface being used for like normal management traffic, um, where we, you know, manage our network such as um, authenticating users, or we're talking to other wireless LAN controllers, um, or even going in using other protocols like, you know, SSH or simple network mail protocol or, you know, certain protocols that's used for us as network engineers to manage the network, which we'll start to get in more because you'll start to see more and more protocols that we use to manage because we're not there under security. I think that's where we'll learn how the protocols to manage. Um, oh, well, here's some protocols here. Right. So describe AP and wireless management access connections. Um, Telnet SSH, HTTP, HTTPS, console and TACX plus and radius. Right. These are terms you definitely want to ensure that you know. OK. Um, obviously, when we go into our uh, like our switch, we want to. Um, like remote in into our access points, we are going to set up a way to remote in, which is Telnet and SSH. Um, as you know, Telnet is not secure. It's 23, it uses UDP, and we don't want that. We would rather use SSH, which uses 22, and it's much secure. It uses TCP, it needs a handshake to say, hey, you know, are you the one I want to send data to? Yes, I'm the one you want to send data to. And then, okay, I'm about to send some data to you. Like that's three-way shape. And as you can see right here, this is our putty, which we talked about earlier. Um, and it's using SSH. And you put in the host name, the IP, which is the management IP address. You're going to put that IP address in, make sure the port's 22 there, click open, and it's going to open the CLI line of the device you want to access um, because it accessed the IP address, right? 
Um, we'll get into that. No, Fred. I mean, we've kind of already been doing that going into the CLI. It's just we don't use putty. And this is all it is. You just open it. It opens just like this. You put in your IP. You put in what uh, connection you want to have. And you just say open. And it literally remotes you into whatever IP address you want to remote into. Okay. Um, obviously, you're going to have to. That's why we set up line console login. We set up secret. We set up exec mode passwords. We set up things to where, because anybody can remote in, but do you have the necessary credentials? So that's why we have the message of the day to say, beware, you know, don't access unless you have, you know, permission. And then you set up your permissions. Okay. Um, HTTP right? That's the initial setup. So when you are initially setting up your uh, wireless LAN controller, you're going to initially set it up using HTTP, which is hypertext, hypertext something protocol, hypertext something, or is it HTTP? Let's see, hypertext transfer. That's what the T was, hypertext transfer protocol, okay? Um, that's how you're going to initially set up your wireless LAN controller, right? Obviously, we know HTTP. What is that? It's like a web address, www, whatever, www. But you're going to use HTTP semicolon, I mean, colon, uh, forward slash, forward slash, and then the IP address, right? It wouldn't be an actual like domain name. And then you have your HTTPS, which is the hypertext transfer protocol secure. So that's when you actually go in and start, you know, securing. So once you initially set up your uh, WLC, you have to use, you know, obviously just regular HTTP. But once you get in, you, you set everything up, you set your passwords, your username, and whatever the case may be, now you use the secure part. And as a, you know, a new person, you're going to come into a network that already has it secure. So you don't have to worry about going through that whole spill of it only having to be HTTP. Um, but it's good to know because, hey, what if you get thrown out there to be an architect? So you definitely want to know this is how you set it up first, and then you start using it with that. No fret, we'll go through the we'll go through a, a lab. And then we have console. We already know what console is, right? It's console cable, rollover cable. We're just going to plug directly into the wireless controller. Now that's really not what we do out here because we're all about remote work. But you may be so awesome that the company flies you out to the headquarters or to one of their data centers, wherever the data centers could be. The data center could be in Chile. The data, you know, data center can be in Paris. Who knows? But they'll fly you out there and say, you need to connect to the, you um, need to console in and see what's going on. And you fly out there. You got secret access. So you go down. Usually it's in some type of basement or something. And you will connect. You know, you'll you'll have your rollover cable connected to your computer and then connect the other end to the wireless LAN controller and you will get into the CLI line like that, right? And then we have TACX plus slash radius. We will talk more about this. This is a security protocol. Um, so when we get to the security section, we will go in and configure all these. Maybe we'll configure it. I don't know. But um, TAC uh, X Plus is a Cisco security protocol and Radius is an open source protocol. All it is, is it allows a host device to be authenticated against a remote, uh, remote server um, or locally authenticated on the device. So when you are, um, let's say you want to, I don't know, um, get into the, let's just make it simple, get into the switch. And the switch asks you for a username and password. Uh, what do you do is TAC acts if it's configured, TAC acts will take your username and password, send it to a remote, remote server that's only dedicated for authentication and say, hey, server, I have this username and password. Are they supposed to get in here? And the server will say, mm, let me check my database. Uh, yeah, they can come in here. Or no, they can't. And then they'll send that message to your screen and your screen will say access not login wrong or it'll just take you to the next screen because your login was successful okay that's all tac x slash radius is one is open source the other one is cisco tac x is cisco i don't know what tac x i think it's like terminal access control something let's take a look because that's something you're going to need to know tac 
tag x plus versus radius. Let's just do that. Tag x plus uses TCP, therefore more reliable than radius. Okay, but they want you to use tag x. Um, let's go here. I think they should give us the full definition. Yep, terminal access controller access control system. Isn't that a mouthful? So tag x is a lot. You should know what it is. Terminal access controller access control system is a Cisco proprietary con pr protocol that is used for the communication of Cisco client and Cisco ASIC server. It is used TCP. Okay, so it makes it reliable. Basically, they're just saying that it's used for the security server. And then radius is remote access dial in uses, user server service. It is an open standard protocol used for the communication between a vendor AAA client, which is like AAA means authentication, accounting, and something else. It's basically, again, it's just checking authentication, accounting, and something. I don't know the other Authorization, name. right? Authorization. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Authorization. So yeah, it's there to, again, just check your credentials it's just checking to ensure you can perform the task you're meant to perform because as engineers or as it administrators we set permissions for people so some people are just guests some people are just regular employees some people get management some people get executive um privileges some people just get read only privileges some people get read write. some people you know what I'm saying like it's so many different types of privileges we have a whole server dedicated <laughs> and that's tax acts or radius. Okay. So we'll go, we'll get more into that, but just know that um, that is a management uh, uh, wireless land controller management connection that uh, we can use. Okay. So these are very uh, good terms to, to know even outside mm -hmm. of wireless. Because tell them and SSH, I mean, that's outside of wireless. That's just how we get into the CLI, just like the con console. Um, that's how we get into the CLI. HTTP, that's specific to wireless LAN controller because that's how we set it up. That's the initial setup. We use this one time and one time only, only when we're first taking that baby out the box and setting it up. Outside of that, we continue using HTTPS to get into the wireless LAN controller and click on what we want to click on, okay? Um, and of course, the last thing is configure the wire, configure the components of a wireless LAN access for client connectivity using the GUI only, the graphic user, face, uh, user interface only, right? So let me look at here. Here's the lab we will use. And you can go ahead and do this tonight or you can wait till tomorrow because tomorrow will just only be about this lab. Um, but, you can do this tonight if you want, like I said. But yes, we'll be doing this as far as connecting a lightweight access point and then a wireless LAN controller and our laptop will connect.